Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I continue to look at the new content added by the 40th anniversary update and this time we are going to take a look at gliders in particular the flight training for gliders which they added. I noticed they haven't added a helicopter flight training section. That would be very difficult. I will go over how I will try to fly helicopters in another video. Uh, I have previously flown gliders in flight sims before, not in real life, but in flight sims. Uh, but the way they've implemented certain things I want to see, they should probably tell me exactly how to get a tow vehicle, for instance, and all that business. Previously, I had posted a video on Kinetic Assistant, which was another way of doing gliders in Flight Sim, and that had its own system for how you get the, uh, get the tow plane and how you get the thermals and all that business. But let's see how they do it here. So Aero Tow Launch Training, I'll just go through everything uh, very basically. And so we're going to be told by a Cessna 172. We've got the DG Aviation DG1001E Neo. Everything has to have Neo at the end. And uh, we will see. So uh, I guess I should, uh, they'll probably just tell us this stuff once we get in there. We're taking off from an airfield in Germany, uh, keeping wings level. And then once you lift off, maintain altitude about five feet above the runway until a tow aircraft is airborne because we'll get lift first. Uh, we are lighter and obviously have a much larger wing than the tow plane, so you don't want to go too far away from the tow plane. And as the tug rotates, gently pull back on the control stick to climb at the same rate as the tug aircraft. As the tug turns, follow the path as closely as possible to maintain tension on the tow line. And at uh, 3,000 feet, Above ground level, the tow pilot will rock the tow aircraft's wings to indicate that you should release and release the tow rope. And as you do, apply a small amount of forward stick to keep your airspeed up and gently turn to the right. Now, the glider can have a significant and adverse effect on the tow plane if it drifts off course. The most dangerous form of deviation is rising above the altitude of the tow aircraft, which is really easy to do, as it will lift the tail of the tug. This will pitch the nose down and potentially induce a dangerous dive from which it can only be recovered if the tow line is jettisoned. Okay, and especially difficult, uh, bad in at low altitudes. So uh, I'm sure they'll tell us this, and it'll be a brief, brief uh, tutorial, but we'll see it in action. Now, with Kinetic Assistant, you could set what altitude you wanted the tow plane to release you at. I'm guessing that that's not the case here. I don't know how in free flight we configure tow planes. So that'll be something. I don't think they'll cover that in the tutorials. We'll have to see. Welcome to your aero tow training. We have paid for a tug up to 3,000 feet and will be flying a predetermined circuit. When you're ready to release, signal the tow aircraft by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Okay, and they've got the the keypad stuff for the, Keep the wings level signaling, the but I'm gonna use twist rudder. Off the but I wasn't using those keys at all. Well, I don't know why we're in external view. Not that much airfield left. Keep directly behind I didn't actually lift off before times. it did. Which is interesting. And vertically. Oh, they want me to be in the box. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel pretty hefty right now. Oh, well, I can retract the landing gear. Maybe that's why I was feeling hefty. I mean, usually landing gear on, on uh, gliders are not very prominent. They're like barely sticking out. Directly behind the tug as it turns. Okay, it's gonna turn. You have to stay behind it. It's a bit choppy right now. It's been that way since the update. I 
haven't lost sight of the tug yet. We're approaching the designated altitude of 3,000 feet. Upon release, gently turn to the right as the tow aircraft turns left. Release uh, we... the cable. Okay, uh, how do I release the cable? Oh, oh, oh. I can't. Oh, that back there? No. Uh... Excellent. Very well done. No, it's not very well done. <laughs> I didn't know where the button was. That's an A. <laughs> okay, I need I need to map. Well, I I, uh, I didn't actually release the cable, so, uh, and that is because it didn't tell me what button to press to release the cable. So. Let's go back to the main menu and make sure we have that mapped to something. Keyboard. Well, let's see. No, there's no keyboard mapping either. Let me just map it onto here. Well, toggle afterburner and is not going to happen on a t on on a glider. So I guess it'll be all right. Winch launch training. Okay, I guess we'll do that. Today, we're going to practice using a winch to launch the DG-1001 into the air. Compared to a tow plane launch, a winch will get us airborne much faster, but with a lower release altitude. Yeah, I don't like signal, the lower release the altitude. Will rapidly accelerate us. Be sure to keep the wings level until the glider lifts off. When you are ready to release, signal the winch operator by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Okay. Here we go, moving the rudder left and right. What is that pulling us anyway? Rotate. Okay, rotating into the climb. Almost oh. at the top, level off, and when you hear a distinct change of sound from the winch, release the cable. The cable has automatically back-released. It's a lot to focus on at once. Keep it up, and you'll get the hang of it quickly. Okay, I want to try that again. Hmm. I tried pushing the button, but I don't... Uh, it seems like it didn't actually release. It can be release. tricky to get right, but you did well. Keep practicing and you'll improve quickly. Okay, let's try it out again. We're supposed to keep uh, keep below 130 kilometers per hour by climbing. Today, we're going to practice using a winch to launch the DG-1001 into the air. Compared to a tow plane launch, a winch will get us airborne much faster, but with a lower release altitude. Once we give the go signal, the winch will rapidly accelerate us. Be sure to keep the wings level until the glider lifts off. When you are ready to release, signal the winch operator by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Okay. Signaling. Okay. Rotate. Rotating. Almost at the top. Level off, and when you hear a distinct change of sound from the winch, release the cable. The cable has automatically backed uh, 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 the, the thing. Lot to focus is on it? Once. Is it? Didn't, it up, I didn't hear any change completely. in the cable before it automatically released. Uh, I mean, I heard the sound, and then she Keep already said work, that it had skills. automatically released. So, yeah, I guess I have to do it before then. Rotate. And up we go. Almost at the top, level off, and when you hear a distinct change of sound from the winch, release the cable. I'm just gonna release it. This is how we do a winch launch. <laughs> I'm gonna release it before I hear anything else. Your concentration high. Let's 
so was releasing it if early like that a good like thing? That, you'll be right up there with the best of them. She Very seems happy. Well done. All right, perfect score. All right, fine. So yeah, I don't know about the sound change, but once we're at the top, just release the bloody thing. Yeah, that's basically why I got that training menu. All right, winch launch training advanced. Practice a simulated winch line break. That seems fancy. All right. Oh, okay. Welcome to your advanced winch launch training. Keep the wings level, rotate into the climb at the correct moment, and maintain a safe speed and trajectory. A winch launch demands the highest level of awareness and ability to appropriately react as quickly as possible. When you are ready to release, signal the winch operator by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Okay, moving the rudder. Oh, she said perfectly. We are too high to land ahead. Turn back and fly alongside the runway. When safe, turn and line up in preparation to land. The uh, map is not entirely clear right now. What are all that rumbling? Extend landing gear. Well, I already have it out, so... Toggle water ballast valve. You know, you should tell me to map these things. That's a big hill. <laughs> yeah, you did not inform me about this hill. So I guess I could get a lift from it or something, maybe. Well, joystick button one. It's got the right idea for the air brakes, but do we need air brakes yet? I don't think so. Okay, air brakes. Oh, we're way high. Space shuttle. Oh no, no, I didn't do it right. I gotta hit the truck. Okay, uh, let me take in the brakes again. We're going around again, folks. I don't think we have enough energy, though. I need to find the water ballast valve. He will release levers there. Water ballast valve. Okay, that that's not going to work out. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. How do you line up with the runway with that? I mean, this isn't even showing a lineup with the runway, is it? I mean, there's that hill in the way, and this isn't lining up with the runway. You turn, and you're turning right over the runway threshold here. This isn't lining up at all. <laughs> uh, I wonder if there's a way to zoom in on this map. Um, Rotate into the climb at the correct moment, and maintain a safe speed and trajectory. Zoom. A winch launch demands the highest level of awareness and ability to appropriately react it's probably as more quickly like as it. possible. When you are ready You're to release, not going that far. signal the winch operator by moving your... How does the truck know where where I've moved the rudder? I can't... I mean, it's... That would be amazing if he did. Cable break. Excellent. You handled that perfectly. Too high to land ahead. Turn back 
back and fly alongside the runway. When safe, turn and line up in preparation to land. Okay, let me try and dump the water quickly. Whoa. Maybe I should go to the right instead. I don't know. Let's go to the left. Darn it, I'm gonna try to line up with the runway this time. Okay, I'm gonna engage the air brakes. Oh, I really flown past it this time. Okay, but I can see it, so that's always a good sign. I think uh, it was because I released the water early, maybe? So 100 to 130 they want kilometers per hour. Okay. That truck better get out of the way. All right. All right. We've landed the glider. That was a simulated cable break, intended to prepare you for flying solo. If you keep flying like that, you'll be right up there with the best of them. Very well done. She's very encouraging. Oh, perfect score. Okay. All right. Training menu. Okay. Now what? Basic handling. Sedona, and we're in the air already. Today, you'll experience soaring in a glider, what many aviators consider to be the purest form of flight. Unlike powered aircraft, a glider pilot must adjust altitude to control airspeed. To increase airspeed, push the stick forward. Pulling back on the stick will lower airspeed. Maintaining constant airspeed in a glider requires the pilot to frequently and carefully adjust stick input and elevator trim. Let's see how the glider feels at different airspeeds. With gliders, expect a delay of one to two seconds from control input to change in speed. Let's increase airspeed to 167 kilometers per hour. Well. Gently push the stick forward to pitch the nose down as you observe the airspeed indicator. One hundred and sixty-seven, like a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> At one hundred sixty-seven kilometers per hour, pull back gently to maintain speed and trim the elevator so that the glider maintains 167 kilometers per hour without pilot input. Uh, now my hand is off the stick. Speed, bring the glider to 102 kilometers per hour. Okay. I'm actually just trimming, not really using the stick much. Um, well, it's apparently not satisfied right now. So, okay, a little bit more. Looks like freaking 102 to me. <laughs> um, I've adjusted the trim. You know, I do have to take the control stick if we turn like that. I mean, my hand is off the stick, but, you know, it's not going to hold exactly 102 kilometers per hour. Come on. I am currently not touching the stick. <laughs> it's it's going to waver a little bit, game. It's not going to be exactly 102. Wind exists. Maybe they want true airspeed. I'm, I'm pretty sure they want indicated airspeed, though. 
I mean, our true airspeed is higher. I can get down to an, a true airspeed of 102 if you want. Oh, okay, now it's okay. It wanted it lower than the 100, and, 100 kilometers per hour on that. Unlike powered aircraft, gliders require considerable rudder input to begin a turn. A vital indicator for turns is the red yaw string on the center of the canopy. We always want to keep it centered. Then we use just the right amount of rudder and ailerons for coordinated flight. To center a deflected string, apply aileron in the same direction or rudder in opposite direction of the deflected string. Let's see what happens to the yaw string if we try yaw to bake string. the It's basically a side slip indicator. Input. Keep the rudder centered and slowly move the stick to the left, then to the right while observing the yaw string. Oh, you just want she just wants left. Steer the glider to straight and level flight again. Let's see what happens if we use the rudder pedals only. Apply left rudder followed by right rudder without touching the stick. Just like before. Um, I have to touch the stick the for the rudder. It's a twist stick rudder. Establish straight and level flight again. Now that you understand the use of the yaw string, let's perform a circle maneuver. Not too sure how much centering it wants, but... Haven't I turned 360 yet? Okay. Fly to right 360. Okay. We finished yet? Are For we now, there yet? Let's return to the airport. You've covered the basics and your skills will improve with practice. You've done a great job. Okay, well, they weren't too satisfied with that. I deviated a bit. Well, I guess it was the trimming that they didn't like. Okay, slip, uh, slipping approach and landing. Crosswind landing. Pilots okay, sometimes need to I, I, I should probably be inside the cockpit. Stop putting me outside. To this. This can even allow a hey, it's to land uh, visualizations. Without air brakes, crucial if they break or freeze during flight. To perform a slip, the pilot holds the nose to one side with rudder input while lowering the opposite wing with ailerons. You may use either side for slipping, but it's easier to control if you apply aileron into the crosswind. We have a left side crosswind. We need to lower the left wing with ailerons while yawing the nose to the right with the rudder. I will advise when to start the slip maneuver during your final approach. For now, fly closer to the runway. It's choppy. Oh gosh. Commence the slip now. Start with right rudder. Uh, uh, it's too choppy. It's too choppy. Uh, it's not good. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, why is it choppy? We've landed here just a few moments ago. Why does it have to be choppy right now? Is it the visualization being this bad? Ah! Okay, maybe maybe it's okay now. Uh, it's, it's better now. Is there much crosswind at all? I don't feel anything. Should I put the air brakes? We're coming in too fast. We set it off really high. Yeah, uh, we were really high. But slipping mover, I, I need an S turn is what I need. We set it off super high.
But yeah, we didn't have much of a crosswind at all. That wasn't my problem. But maybe I should use the air brakes much earlier this time. I was so focused on figuring out where the crosswind that we were supposed to be fighting against was that I didn't even think about the air brakes. It's only wind of five knots. <laughs> Do I need any special maneuver for this? We set it off over to the left is, is the only thing. This. This Whatever, I'll, I'm gonna have the air brake out right now. I mean, she said without air brakes. But to perform a slip, the pilot holds the nose to one side with rudder input. Commence the slip now. I mean, Start with right rudder. There's right wet rudder now and left, left aileron. aileron to keep the I've got the air track. brakes. Now, in addition to slipping, apply full air brakes. The combination I put the air brakes. will quickly bring us onto our needed glide path. Okay. See how quickly we're approaching the normal glide path? Let's leave the slip now. When okay. established, hold the pitch attitude by gently pulling back on the stick. I've left the slip. I, I don't know. I don't even know what that was for. Speed up during this maneuver. Use your elevator to maintain approach speed. Good job. See how simple and efficient the slip is? I guess it's Return sort of like an S turn kind of thing. Air brakes out as required for approach. Okay, well, I get what they wanted the at least. We still have left crosswind and need to align with the runway. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was just because we were out of alignment with the runway that we had to do the slip maneuver. Because, anyway, whatever. We we have learned the maneuver. We'll figure out what the use of it is later. Okay. And that's that. All Slipping right. Slipping approaches take time to master, but are a great way to nail your landings. You now know the basics. Very precise on the controls. Carry on. Okay, well. Some points off, but it's fine. Okay, thermal identification. Let's see. Glider pilots need to continuously be on the lookout for the next thermal. Well, or there's other just all of sorts of thermals right aloft. now. They could thermals probably do a fewer lines. Parcels of rising air. Gliders must fly in tight circles to stay within them. Cumulus clouds, which typically resemble cotton balls, are a good indicator of thermals as they often form above them. Thermals suited for lift often require pilots to search under a few cumulus clouds. The variometer is a vital tool for soaring. This device indicates a sailplane's rate of ascent and descent with audible tones. After familiarization with the variometer's tones, you'll be able to know your climb rate without referencing other instruments. A variometer indicates a climb with an interrupted high pitch tone and descent with a continuous low pitch tone. I need it sort of louder. The cloud, listen closely to the variometer and be ready to turn in when its tone indicates lift. There it goes. Okay, the variometer is indicating lift. Turn in and begin circling. Roll into a 45 degree bank and complete at least one circle. Oh, Hating I should have gone a little bit typically requires completing more. at least one full turn within it. I, I wasn't at a 45 degree bank at all. I'll go over on this side. Okay, 45 degree thing. Let's search for a thermal under a 
neighboring cloud. Okay, I guess it's satisfied. Oh, I'll keep going a bit. Now we'll work on keeping your circles tight and smooth. Yes. Two important rules to follow are keep your speed low between 93 and 102 kilometers per hour. That is what Maintain you. a constant altitude. But should we turn into the lines? Or oh gosh. And the nose of the glider. Yes, we'll turn this way. Above the horizon. That didn't work out right. Haven't I done 500 feet yet? <laughs> I feel like I'm in a thermal. Satisfied now. Because I was just shy of 500 feet when you are I left the thermal. Practice these skills solo. Go ahead and continue perfecting these maneuvers in a single seater. Okay, I didn't do too good with that, but we'll proceed. Ridge soaring. Yes. This thing. They didn't really talk about how to interpret the thermal lines. They just sort of this said, here's a thermal. To ridge lift and they keep going into external We just view. launched from Reedsville Airfield and are heading toward Jack's Mountain Ridge. At prevailing winds, the ridge will generate this good lag lift. here. The ridge extends over many miles, but we'll only use a short portion for introduction. Let's fly directly to the ridge and follow it in a southwesterly direction. We have a tailwind on our route to the ridge, so we'll get there quickly. As soon as you recognize ascending air during our approach to the ridge, begin a right turn. Uh, there's a lot of lag for some reason. Maybe because of all the lines. Uh, I'm traffic. too far, so Currently, I'll try to get closer. To get because the ridge is to our left hand side. I'm not really getting much lift here. But I guess I'm getting enough. We are a beam Belleville. Let's turn back. Remember to turn away from the ridge. Okay. Turning back. Oh, still wants me to be fast. This is Highway 322. Let's return to the airport. It's off your left wing. Great flying. You can definitely explore ridge soaring on your own now. We can also okay. go up for another round if you aren't comfortable yet on your own. Well, excellent work. I'll With figure it out training, on my own. You'll continue to improve. You want me to land? Nope, I guess not. Yeah, not so good, but uh, we can work on that. So, that's it for the training missions. And uh, I got a couple of bees at the end there. But I'm curious in free flight how we... No, let's go back to the main menu. How do we just get the tow plane and everything? I mean, sort of the basic mechanics of it. So I'll go with one of... I'll, let's just go with one of the ones that we just flew in. Um, yeah, let's just... I guess this is one of the new ones. So the old gliders that were freeware that I had picked up, uh, they have the cruise speed, max altitude, endurance, and range, as you see with the DG-808 there. But the new ones that they've added has wingspan, max speed, glide ratio, and min sync. So 
uh, dead giveaway as f as far as which one is suited to this new uh, new mode of things. And we've got some ballast here and pilot launch method. Okay, so in this glider menu, we have the launch method here. We can either pick uh, Cessna or we can pick the winch launch options. Sky drive glider winch. I mean, the winch is a little bit of fun. Uh, they've got some other starred things, don't they? Warner Springs, El Tiro. Are those the glider ports? Or are those different? <laughs> um, I don't know what that star means. Glider friendly airports, okay. All right. Well, let's try Truckee Tahoe then. We've got seagulls there. And I'm not going to do a full flight this time. I'm just going to get it into the air so we can see. And we won't have real time right now because it's dark, but I'll have real weather. Oh dear, it's really cold today. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I'm sure that's not a problem at all. Oh. Now, I thought... Uh, show 3D Thermal is here. So I'll turn that on. Okay, so I guess we'll do some rudder wiggles to start it off. Maybe? Yes, I hear... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Rudder wiggles to start it off, for sure. I'm not going up. <laughs> whoa, 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 okay, the series like. Uh, 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 the series like. Maybe I should clear my rolling cash or something. Gosh. Ah, uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, 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 yeah, of course I'm gonna go out of the box when I can't even get more than one frame every few seconds. I don't know what's happened with this update and this, but maybe the rolling cache. That's my, I can't see a darn thing right now. Oh, we've, we've, we separated. <laughs> we've separated the hard way. Uh, I can't, why do I not have an attitude indicator anyway? I guess they didn't expect us to fly in in the middle of a storm, huh? And yeah, oh, there's there's some some thermal lines, but it's not gonna be good enough for us. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know why it's so choppy. I think I'll I'll quit right now. So I'll try and figure out what's going on. But at least we, I mean, it wasn't choppy during the tutorials. So anyway, uh, we managed to get through the tutorials and I will examine gliders in further detail uh, soon. Uh, but helicopters probably come next. I think I want to fly gliders along the Pyrenees and the Alps, but I don't know if that's going to be doable or not. We'll see. A long glider journey would be interesting. But for now... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.